Hi. Hello there. Let me just uh, sit down in this dark room. I'm feeling like shit. Yeah, we're both feeling like shit. Yeah, it's, it's just a, it's been a shitty week, you know. Been a shitty day. How are you feeling anyway? I know you were a bit sick before. Uh, um, I, I was sick all over the weekend, right? Uh, did you clear up? Uh, but, uh, Poor weekend. Like, I, 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 like, coughed up my esophagus this morning. Lovely. Yeah. And then I sounded really, really, really weird for about four hours until I got over the coughing up my esophagus. But you always sound weird. Thanks, mate. Thanks, That's thanks, right. thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. And what was I going to say? Oh, but there is a silver lining to everything. Oh. Because I was so, like, bedridden over the weekend, I couldn't be bothered to do anything, obviously. Uh-huh. But my phone was next to me, so I got quite a lot of Christmas shopping done, I'm not going to lie. Oh, lovely. Good thing you got that out of the way, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, uh, I, I, I don't think I can be fucked with Christmas shopping for the moment. But I was roped into, like, three secret Santas that I did not know about. Three secret Santas? How does three that work? Three secret Santas. Is that yeah, three. with Annie and Yuya? No, 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 not even them. Two groups from work and then my family. Two groups from work? Well, you know I go from different branches. Oh, my God, yeah. And you see, your family does Secret Santa. Oh, they are this year, apparently. I think they oh. do it every year. It's just I never pay attention. So someone doesn't get a gift. Aren't they Muslim? Oh, yeah, but they don't really care. <laughs> like, for some reason, I'm seen as the rebel, but, like, they openly flaunt indulging in other faiths. And I'm just like, no, I just don't like any of them. They're so. kind of cool like that. You know? It's like having the best of both uh, yes, worlds. It's like cool, like in inverted commas, cool. No, no, I think they're cool. I mean, it's like having the best you've of both worlds. You've met my family. I mean, you've seen them. I've met them once. And I, I, and, yeah, you didn't they, meet them. They were standing there and you were standing there. And they stood there like, geez. <laughs> so, yeah, so how's work been anyway? Before we get onto the topic. Uh, busy, you yeah. know. Have you... you know, like, I, I, at the moment the last people left, I had, like, ten solid minutes of just saying fuck. Yeah, I, I know that feeling. Fuck, shit, dick. Fuck, shit, dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, not, you know, not even for the acting for the podcast. Like, actually, yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah. No, it's been one of those days where I've wanted to scream all day, but I couldn't. But, like, it got to the end, towards the end of the day, and it was like, fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah. I hate that feeling. I fucked up majorly at work today. You know... When you come to my area, some, some people might know I work for a, a certain company that involves uh, uh, massive amounts of cabinets and things. And Yeah, you work for the House of Parliament. Exactly. So, you know, refurbishment is a bitch. But, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'll just say it. I work for IKEA at the moment. No, I just meant because of the cabinets and, yeah, like oh, the shadow oh, oh, cabinet. And... <laughs> oh, oh, you. Uh, oh, you silly. <laughs> you, you didn't get it, so. Just... No, I didn't, no. <sighs> It and is, also, it, also, a lot of our downloads are from, like, the States, so they're not going to get it, so... Yeah. <sighs> it, you know, it was too smart a joke. It was too smart a joke. Yeah, I really you know, need just, to dumb myself down. Say, say it like that. Say it like that. Yeah, I, I'm used to working with Matt, and, like, he, see, he brings a level in, of intelligence I to know, the show. I know, yeah. I, I, and now I'm stuck with you because he's trapped in a well. Yeah, but at least I'm happy. Yeah. I chucked yeah. him a phone down there the other day, though, and then he said, why didn't you bring me food? And I was like, ah... Okay, you know, well, you, Tesco's is closed now, so. You know what's the ultimate insult? You, ch- you chucked him a phone down. Has he called you? No. Oh. What a bastard. Maybe intelligence isn't everything. Mm. But it's a lot. Wanker. <laughs> um, anyway, you were saying. Yes, yeah, so it involves pretty much dealing with uh, tons of cabinets and putting things together quite efficiently. And you get people spending upwards of, say, £5,000 on these things. And so this was a gentleman came to me, and we were putting together a simple order. It was just some basic cabinets. Uh, we were putting it together in pieces, but I made the mistake of giving him the wrong hinge. Now, it's a 95-degree hinge, which means it opens normally. Like, that's what you put on a fridge door, basically. And what usually the standard was is a 127-degree hinge, but he'd asked me for a simple one. So I just gave him that, and apparently making that small little change meant he had to stay for about one and a half hours extra while they gave him a refund and gave him a different hinge now the thing is he could have used that hinge if he wanted to but he made a big song and dance out of it so as most people do as some some people do um because you can use that hinge but he'd asked for the simple hinge so i said okay here you go and because of that it made it look like it was my fuck up so i had to take it and um he i had to go down to customer services and sort it out myself because he was making a big old song and dance about it so um it just shows that you make one simple little 
change in the plan and it catapults, it snowballs. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, but Chris, can I just say something? Go ahead. He asked for the, a different hinge, did he not? Yes. So he is at fault? Well, that's what it's like on paper. It is my fault in the end for complying with it and not correcting it. What happened to the customer was always right? Isn't that what people are saying? Yeah, so that's what I'm going with. So just appease what him. What a fucking tip! Just appease him and get him out of there. But the problem was they called up to the kitchens department, the offices, and uh, I had to go down and sort it out. And it was kind of embarrassing, to be honest. So that that was sorted, and he actually got to go over. But at the same time, he's not a complete tip because... I would be angry as well if I'd made a mistake and made me have to wait an hour and a half to sort out. Because you know when you go to Ikea... But he made a mistake. Yeah, but you know when you go to Ikea... Oh, yeah. ...and you have to wait every time they want one of the bigger items to be brought out. Even the hinges, even the small hinges, they what they need to do, something that could have saved everything, is if the hinges were available to the public to pick up rather than them having to put it through on a computer and wait for them to collect it. If they were just available, they're just hinges. You should be able to just pick them up, but, oh, well, you can't, apparently. It's just annoying. But that was my big fuck-up of the day, and hopefully it of the year. It was your fuck-up. It's that titwank's fuck-up. It's, it's my fuck-up for not correcting him. Technically, you can put that hinge on the door, but it's not so the standard you're not in, one. So you weren't even incorrect in your failure? Well... I, apparently there is a standard hinge for it. It's 127 and not the 95. Um, well, sometimes when I'm baking a cake, I don't do the measurements correctly. Yeah, uh, but it just goes to show you make one small bugger up and it snowballs into a bigger thing. But at the end of the day, most people said, yeah, he was making a big song and dance over hinges, for fuck's sake. But it's all sorted. That was my big fuck up. And uh, yeah, there you go. But do you have any stories of big fuck ups that you've had? But then again, you're quite good at your job, so... I don't know. Um, I overcharged someone by thirty pounds, but realised the moment he paid it and gave him a refund. Oh, that's um, that's all right. Yeah. Uh, Did he actually put it through the till? Yeah, but it was fine because we can amend it. Oh, that reminds me of a time I really I almost fucked up majorly at Card Factory. Chris, it seems like you're just a fuck up. I am a bit, yeah. But I almost charged a person two thousand pounds for a card, as opposed to two pounds. Well, no, I've done that. You type in one extra zero, but then before they put it in, you're just like, actually, no, don't do that. Or you yeah. know, your overdraft, your bank's going to be calling you. Why are you spending this much at a dentist? Ha ha. And we but all laugh about it. Yeah, exactly. That would have been fun. Yeah. Charging him two, uh, two grand for a fucking card from Card Factory of all places. Yeah, it would have been funny. Should be twenty p. I could have looked back and laughed at it, but nah, I uh, I had to correct it. Would have been a shit day. But anyway, yeah. That's the story you wanted to wait until like the podcast to tell. Well, I didn't want to say over the phone. I was a bit sad at the time. Oh, yeah. Because I thought it was just going to be like I don't know something extraordinary that happened. Not some guy was a dick. I wanted to wait until the open arms of the dog seduction would. Just take me in and just comfort me. Mate, he's a dick for switching the fucking hinges. You're a dick for apologising oh, no, when no, you're no. just doing what you're asked. I'm not a dick for apologising. I'm mature because, uh, oh yeah, you don't want to apologise for it, but you got to. It's the job. Well, no, if you didn't do something wrong, you don't apologise. Well, technically I did because I did, I did do something wrong. I didn't correct him. But in your job, the first thing that they tell you is the customer is always right. Sometimes. IKEA has a bit of a, uh, you know what, we've got too many customers coming to us sort of business. We don't have to worry too much if a customer's being a pain. Which is, I kind of like it, but at the same time, I'm too used to appeasing the customer. So, it's a bit, <laughs> you're going to have a lot of people that are just pissed off every now and then. Yeah, I um, was talking about it to a colleague today and I was like, you know, I've just stopped giving a shit. If they're going to be a dick to me, I don't see why I can't be a dick to them. Mm-hmm. So so I've stopped. If they're being arsy to me, then that's it. No, mm-hmm. I'm nice to the ones that are nice. There's arsy, but then there's, like, justified arsy, when people are just a bit Oh, no, I understand off. justified arsy. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's fine. But most of it isn't. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. Or most of it, yeah, even if it's justified and they, and they take it out on you and it's like, hold on a second, what have I done? Yeah. yeah but leave me alone. Sometimes people just go are... away, mate. Fuck off, piss off! Mm. Sometimes people are understanding, but, oh, well, yeah, that's just how it is. Yeah, so um, we talked about this for ten minutes. Yeah. I thought, like, a dragon had come to Ikea and, I don't know, raped your, you against some flat pack furniture. What? what? I don't know, something extraordinary. Oh, God, no, no, that brings back two memories. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I wish it was a dragon. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, anyway. It was speak- a unicorn with its horn. Speaking of, <laughs> of um, <laughs> fantasies and beloved creatures getting raped, how about DC, eh? Yeah. Well, you probably know this by the time you're listening to this because you read the episode title. Mm. If you don't, you're kind of an idiot. But we're going to do the DC Universe today because I'm too sick to research. And Chris left his pasture out for too long, so it's not creepy anymore. It's just disgusting. Mm. So we don't, we can't do the creepy pasture. I, we I, can't do the murder, so we're going to do the DC. It wasn't that bad. It just got It a bit, was disgusting. It got, it got a little bit incestuous, you know? Who hasn't had a little bit of incestuous fanfic every now and then? Come. Me. No, oh, of course. And most sane human beings? You are the epitome of of uh, human futility. I'm the epitome of human nature. Uh-huh. Well, intro music, please. <laughs> stuff i think we paused for a little bit too long last time really yeah what you mean in between takes yeah in between intro music and us talking okay well it doesn't matter because we um Uh, we edit so yeah yeah so this this whole conversation is pointless to the listeners so dicks and and penis and they won't hear this well, really? they, well, they might now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because you've just said dicks and penis, I might leave it in. The kind of shit you like to do. Actually, that reminds me. Have you seen that new uh, program that Adobe has released where it's like Photoshop no. for the voice? Where they can no. literally make you say anything now. No. You didn't even have to finish it. I mean, when you said Adobe, you were just like, no, of course I haven't seen it. No, no I mean, it's like a something you see a, on a video on a con. Do, 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 you, do I look like I do this stuff, Chris? Well, you don't have to own Adobe to see it. I know, but does it look like I do this stuff, Chris? Well, watch it took videos. It me three days to realise Leonard Cohen had died, which is when I panicked and thought Matt might have killed himself down in that well. Oh, yeah, you've gone off the radar, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, how's... I, well, I'm on the Twitter, but I don't really look at other people's tweets that much. Yeah, how's how's life twi- treating you on the, the far side? On the Twitter side? Sarah. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. You said, Damn it! You know, the last person to say that was Donald Trump. <laughs> so, you know, you said... Um, when someone the... was picking on him. No, no, no. <laughs> I wish. But, uh, you know, he was saying, like, all those people that are, are hunting down on people because I won, just all that racist stuff, just stop it. Just stop it. And he actually said that on the news. He thinks that's just going to do it. You know, that's justified. So I just imagine him with climate change, looking at the ocean. He doesn't it, believe in climate change. No, but if, you know, if he did, I imagine his excuse would be to just go down to the ocean, look at the ocean and just shout it. Just stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> stop warming. Well, you know how the UN can charge, like, countries and stuff because of uh, global warming mm-hmm. and how the, how much they pollute to the world? Yeah. Yeah, so if if Donald Trump removes all the regulations on, like, carbon monoxide and fossil fuel and all that stuff... Mm. How how much is the U, uh, US going to be out of pocket, really? Well, to be honest, the, he's kind of not really on board with climate change. So we, he, you remember he, he backed out of that NATO plan to uh, go green, which kind of destabilised the plan a little bit. Oh, yeah, I know. That's what I mean. He's not about the climate change. He doesn't believe it. Mm. So he's willing to get rid of all these uh, regulations and businesses about the burning of fossil fuels and stuff because it's more profitable to them. Mm-hmm. So he's going to eventually, if he gets his way... He's going to add to pollution and global warming. So the UN charge countries, they fine countries for their how much they contribute to global warming. Mm. So the US will be out of pocket. I don't know, to be honest. I haven't really looked up at the, the economics of our pocket. Or how much the US actually owes as well. Cause, uh, oh, yeah, they owe a lot on people a lot of money. Yeah, but they have some of the best economies. So I. Yeah, but they owe a lot of people a lot of money. Of I'm, I hope that they start calling it. Uh, will people start asking for their money back? Well, who who do you think will ask first? I don't know. I don't know. The Rothschilds. I'm a bit ignorant on this fact, to be honest. Well, like, no, well, I don't know. Who knows who owns the Federal Reserves? Hmm. Um, there's rumours of, like, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and stuff. Um, oh. I don't know. Yeah. And other people 
hopefully China and some of it. Hopefully China. Yeah. Okay, anyway, like, no, we did the Trump episode, right? Mm -hmm. We got trumped once. I don't want to do it again, Chris. We can't talk about him every week. I don't know. He might be kind of funny. I know. I don't want to talk about him every week. Okay. Other than to say one thing, right? Can you remember a time when a president was elected and he had this much hate against him? Americans are, like, ridiculously patriotic, and usually they're like, yeah, this is a new president. But no, this one, this one, it seems like it's causing a bloody civil war. Well, think about the media as well. I mean, Trump is, uh, it, it's, it's astounding. He's not a career politician. He doesn't have any experience, and it just feels like, again, dirty, sexy money. So I'm sure Reagan has had his problems. I, 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 the more you mention dirty, sexy money... The, the more I believe that you have not even watched an episode. No, I have. I've watched one episode. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll get into that, but I just, I'm tired of it. It's been too many, uh, too many months campaigning. And the fact that it can affect us over here, you know, that we have to sit through all this, this campaigning. So, I mean, it's good to know as well, but I'm, I'm, na I'm knackered with it. I can't even imagine what Americans are going through right now. They're, yeah. they're probably just too tired to fight this. And... Oh, they're fighting it. That's the problem. Um, well, okay, let's okay, let's just... Oh, we're tired of it. Let's move on. Mm. So, DC. Uh, what is your exposure to DC, Chris? Um, I, I like I like Batman. You know, I I, uh, I, I used to watch the old animated series. Uh, and um, Oh, everyone used to watch the animated series when they yeah, were younger. Awesome, like, of yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. It's probably done much more... Well, from what I've seen, it's done much better in its TV roles as opposed to films. The films, they're embarrassing, but some of them are just fun embarrassing. So, I think they're just embarrassing. Oh, well, to on. be honest, I haven't actually watched one since um, since uh, That Man of Steel. What do you think of that? <sighs> oh, okay. I'll think I mean, like, it's just very... First of all, it's very long. Yeah. And it did not need to be that long. I thought, a third of it could have been chopped up. And it was so slow. Just so slow. I thought it was a good uh, origin story. The origin story was actually quite good. And I think the problem is it didn't mesh very well with the action. But the action I loved as well. I mean, it was fun. I, I watched it when it came out. And I didn't decided not to watch it again. Hmm. Which, first, that's a first sign of that I didn't like it. I decided not to watch it again. But there's nothing that seems that memorable for me, other than, like, him killing Zod. Don't you remember the fight between him and that, those two, uh, oh, what are they called? Kryptonians? With those suits? And they, they're throwing, like, rail carts at each other? They and all planes look the and... same. Okay, the thing with um, Zack Snyder is, he's not really a director. He's, like, a visual person. Mm. In terms of building a proper story and a proper film to be proud of. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Well, it's a he could be pleaser. a cinematographer, but like an actual director that's in control of everything. No, he sucks. Well, you know, it's a crowd pleaser, and uh, some some people liked it, some people didn't. But he's a hack. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but you didn't even watch bother watching um, the Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice, or as I like to call it, the advert for Justice League. Well, I'm sure it's got its moments, but to be honest, I uh, Batman drops in in Suicide Squad, and I wasn't very impressed. And Apparently Suicide Squad was woefully awful, so I didn't even bother looking at that. Yeah, that's one I... I well, this tells you what you need to know. I liked uh, Man of Steel, and I thought Suicide Squad was shit. Mm, yeah, well, the last DC movie I watched was The Man of Steel. Mm. I, I couldn't watch beyond that, because I was like, oh, they're all going to be like this. Yeah. Because they're all... Because of the Dark Knight trilogy, they're trying to do it in that same vein, but it doesn't work. Dark Knight trilogy isn't as good as everyone says it is. Yeah, it's not. I love Christopher Nolan, but it's not something to bow down to. Mm. It was a comic movie that was set in the real universe, which is fine. And it was done well enough. Mm -hmm. It was good. And, yeah, but I d I've never rewatched Batman Begins. I've never rewatched The Dark Knight. I've watched The Dark Knight Rises twice, and that's it. I mean, they're gritty, but it's fine because there was only three of them and it was different to the other crap that was getting put out around that time because this was before Marvel, Marvel had started up. And they were years and years apart. They didn't come all in one go. Yeah. Whereas they're trying to do the grittiness of Batman in this new wave of DC movies. But it's too much. I mean, you can't have all that. And it's there's not even a good gritty. It's just, ugh. Mm. Yeah. And they're doing, like, what? They're trying to put out, like, three or four movies a year. Something ridiculous like that. 
And it's not the same as Marvel, because Marvel movies, they have dark moments sometimes, but in general, they're fun. Yeah, and you can true. take your fan to see them, and you want to watch it again on like a rainy afternoon or on Chris or on Bo- Christmas Eve or Boxing Day when they have the Christmas movies on. Mm. You're not going to sit there and watch Man of Fucking Steel when you have the Avengers on, are you? I still think Man of Steel is all right. Um, I think it depends on the, well. Obviously, there are going to be people that prefer the greenness. I think that Marvel at one point almost fell into that same trap of gritty. Until that, someone took a step back, maybe Whedon, and said, "Let's uh, let's look at ourselves, look where we're going, and let's Which kind one, of." Where did you think they were getting too gritty? Well, they were starting to like. Um, oh, whereabouts? Um, I think it might have been around Iron Man One, where they were trying to be gritty in Iron Man One. Well, in Marvel standards, gritty, like they were trying to in, like this is the big shit. This is where everything's going crazy. Uh, not not say the same sort of gritty as DC have gone for. DC have gone for an extreme baditude sort of thing. I don't remember this. To no. be fair, I haven't watched Iron Man 1 in a very long time. I think I watched it a couple of years ago. You know, and they they start, like, the Three Rings group is supposed to be, like, based on Al-Qaeda and things like that, around the time anyway. And it's trying to do what Dark Knight did and bring things into the real world. All Everything that's happened in Marvel is set, set in our time. Mm-hmm. It's contemporary. So they sort of need to have some sort of contemporary links. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's, I don't think that was them trying to be gritty. That was them trying to make you realise this is right here, right now. Okay, yeah, sure, you could say that. I, I, I just think it's funny that you think Iron Man 1 at any point was trying to be gritty. Well, that's why I'm saying they almost went... That was just went, mindless fun. They almost went down that road and, you know, they just didn't go there. I don't believe it. Okay, fine. And And to be fair, Iron Man 1... That was produced, directed, and released even before Joss Whedon was attached Uh or in talks to do the um, helming of the Marvel Universe anyway. Okay. Uh, Anyway, let's move on. You don't watch um, the TV shows, though, do you? Uh, No, I'm not a big fan of Did you never even watch, like, Smallville or anything? Because that was on for a long time. You must have watched some of it. Uh, I saw it every now and then when I was doing homework, but it never really appealed to me, to be honest. Oh, yeah, no, it was, it was so... It, it sucked. I watched it for ten years, but I can openly say, yeah, no, it pretty much sucked. Uh-huh. I mean, first of all, they've got this male model that looks like he's in his 20s or 30s playing 15-year-old Clark Kent, who's supposed to be, like... Yeah, it's supposed to be before he becomes Superman, which is uh-huh. obviously why it's called Superman the Younger Years. But he basically looked like Superman. Uh-huh. I think... That's not the reason I didn't watch it. I think I just... Uh, oh, because the storylines were terrible and um, not even the acting that. was it... rubbish and the special effects weren't that great. Oh, I'm, I've seen some of the effects. They weren't that bad. I think, actually, if anything, I thought it was kind of cool. That uh, they were... Yeah, no, they weren't that bad. I mean, I thought it was cool that they were using special effects like that in a TV series. Mm-hmm. But it's like You didn't when... watch the finale, mate. No, I didn't. And I, 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 I've never watched it more than a few. So I, it's just I wasn't into Superman as a kid. I've never mm-hmm. really... I I liked the fact that with Superman, because he's invincible, they have to come up with other scenarios to raise the stakes. Like, uh, it's not him that's in danger, it's, say, the world, and it's the world he has to save, not himself. Oh, no, like, with Smallville, right? They had, like, so many different forms of kryptonite, and he'd get infected, like, every every few episodes, and it's like, really, really? I know that, and, look, the kryptonite bullet is done to death now, but he's been here for over 60 years, and... Uh, some of the Superman mythos that you get in some of the comics, I suppose, is uh, when it's not him that's in danger. They cripple him because of his character. You know, it's how does he deal with being this, you know, invincible man and he has to be an icon and things like that. That's cool. Because everything else now, it's it's everyone and their mum has a kryptonite bullet. So it's just not as engaging these days. Yeah. Every time there's an asteroid that hits Earth, I just go hunting for it and just take a piece just in case. But like Batman. Apparently Batman has, uh, in one storyline, has embedded uh, a piece of kryptonite into Superman so that he can... Um... Oh, wait, no. Sorry, it was in a game. It was a possible ending you had for Batman, and uh, he embeds a piece of kryptonite into Superman. And so at any point, if Superman loses control, he can just detonate it, and it would destroy him from the inside. I wish I could have done that with Clark Kent in Smallville. Yeah, is it that bad? Yeah, I mean, like, at its moments. I mean, towards the end, there were highs, but, mm. I mean, yeah, I watched it for ten years, and every, well, I was kept being disappointed. I don't know why I do it to myself. I think I think that's why everyone got upset about it, because you waited so long to see it. 
you felt see him in the suit. Did you see it from the beginning? Yeah. Oh, so you're that kind of nerd. <laughs> yeah. When I watch a, when I watch a TV show, uh, if I if I watch it first first couple of years, right, I sort of have to keep going till the end. Uh-huh. If it's like in the first season and I've watched a few episodes, and I'm just like, ah, it's not that great. Yeah, it's easy to let go. But if I've watched like two, three seasons. That's it, I'm with it for life. Mm. Well, until it gets cancelled. Yeah, you're pretty dedicated with that sort of shit. Yeah, too dedicated, I, I would say. I would and say so everyone too. everyone else would say, yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, as long as you enjoy it, that doesn't matter. Uh, um, well, that's but unless, point, unless you destroy it. yourself over it. Yeah, exactly, so... Oh, I destroy myself over television all the time. Mm, I know. Like, the DC universe on the CW in America, right? Uh-huh. They've made a whole universe out of it. But at this point, it doesn't make sense, the universe. It doesn't make sense. I'm trying to think of the science behind it. And it's like, but there's this timeline and that timeline, and we've got these legends of tomorrow that are travelling through time to make sure nothing changes. Is, so it's is, like, but how did they all link together? Is that DC, then? Yeah, the DC Universe. If you asked me a year ago, I'd say that like DC television is probably way better than Marvel television and uh, the Marvel movies are better than DC movies, hands down. Yeah. But I think the DC television universe, they don't know how to keep track of it. Mm-hmm. They don't have the brains that Marvel have keeping track of all their different shows and their movies and all the plot lines. That keeping I things li- chronologically linked yeah. and stuff, yeah. I think this is where, yeah, exactly, uh, a couple of years ago, like you said, DC were king of it. Uh, they had all their animations, you know, had, they had a, you know, they were the only ones that really had Monopoly on the market for TV shows. And then all of a sudden, over the past year, Marvel was just busted nuts all over Netflix. That's the key, like, yeah. releasing straight no, to ne- Netflix. Netflix and, is, oh, my gosh. is the key, because, yeah. like, Leg- Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? I re- I love Joss Whedon, so I really did try. I think Whedon gets too much love. He's good, but people blow him so hard. Seriously. No, no, I love him because of, like, the way he seems to be as a person, how funny he is, how, how, how I'm sure, like, into... I'm, sh- I'm sure Jack Snyder tells a few good jokes here and there. Yeah, but, but like, how in- he's very good at characterization. But, like, the only things that I've seemed to have liked that he's done is, like, uh, the Marvel series, Buffy, Angel, Firefly. Mm-hmm. There was Dollhouse, which isn't terrible, but I haven't watched it since it- I first watched it. Oh, dear. And, like, I, that's the only, like, just Sweden show that I've done that with. Like, Buffy I've watched, like, a hundred times over. Same with Angel, same with Firefly, same with Serenity, um, same with The Avengers, mm. same with Age of Ultron. Well, not a hundred times. I watched Age of Ultron twice, and I didn't even really like that. <laughs> you geek. I didn't really like it, Age of Ultron. Like, because the second time I watched it, my brother was just like, oh, we're going to go watch, Aven- we're gonna watch Avengers in about ten minutes. You can come watch. And I went and sat, and then it took, and then I realised, Oh, that meant Adventures Age of Ultron. They didn't mean the first one. Yeah. I mean, I still sat through it because I'd already sat down and like, uh, turned off my it's, computer. It, it was, it was, you know what? I I don't think it was a bad film. It's just it had too much hype. That's a hype killer, and I, I don't know. It made some stupid choices. Yeah. And anyway, it, what was my point was um, Agents of Shield. Like I tried watching it when it first came out, and I got to like episode three, mm. and then like a, a year or a year and a half later, I tried watching it again. And I got to episode four. Yeah. And I haven't tried again since. Is it that bad? Well, I don't... I, ju- I just don't think the characters are that great. Agent Phil Coulson, yeah, he's great. But in, like, small doses. Um, he's the leader of the pack. And he's the he's the best part of the show, obviously. They try but, to make him a badass compared to what he is on the film. Oh, man. He's a badass even in the film. Okay. I love Phil Coulson. My interest in him wasn't enough to sustain my interest in the show. All the other characters, they were blander than bland. Mm. But were they, trying, were they trying to give him cool quips and making them fun characters or something? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like... That's what Marvel's done a lot. That's one thing I really hated about uh, The Winter Soldier. Um, you know, it is no, 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 you need to stop sucking that dick because <laughs> look, The Winter Soldier, it was a good film. <laughs> Are you um, saying that I suck the Winter oh, Soldier? Oh, you suck dick. it so hard. Um, <laughs> The Winter Soldier, it was a good film, and I, I acknowledge that, but there's too many instances where something serious is happening, and I know you've got to keep the mood light, and that's cool, but you know, and well, Chris Evans turns to Scarlett Johansson and makes some sort of uh, hilarious sexual innuendo quip just before a giant death helicopter turns up you know and 
right next to them and, you know, tries to kill him. And I'm just, I know it's a comic book film, but Jesus Christ, it, it was cheesy. And people suck it so hard because they like to ship the characters. And, and like... Um, that is what happens with this type of fiction. Always shipping. So much shipping going on. It's a pain in my fucking ass. It ruins shows. And yeah, exactly. It, the fandoms always fucking ruin shit. They always do. And it's just, it's bollocks, mate. It's bollocks. I mean, it happens to the DC shows a lot. Mm -hmm. And, like, because it's, like, on a tiny network in America, right, I don't understand how how they have such a huge fan base. They seem to have a big fan base. And their fans seem to ruin the show with their opinions. Well, fans always fucking ruin the show. They're very forthcoming with it. Yeah. And they're very... Like, you know, I'll attack the writer on Twitter if I don't get my yeah, way. Yeah, that was stupid. I, I hate it when stuff like that happens. Yeah, but it's just... And it ruins... I feel like it ruins the show because, like, the writers are trying to appease them. Well, yeah, I've seen it said time and time again. There's a there's this animation guy who was involved with a couple of projects. If you interact with your, your fans, don't let them dictate... Uh, don't, you know, have your plan, but... And listen to them, but don't let them dictate where they want it to go. Because once you start doing that, it doesn't become a show. It becomes a, a bloody uh, fan service project. And it's that's not right. It's just cringy as hell, you know? Because yeah. fan, fans want to see this character get with that character and fuck that other character. And, you yeah. know, and that's not how TV works. That's not how stories yeah. work. Yeah, like Arrow. I mean, the first two seasons, brilliant, right? Th season three and four. It, it, you can tell it was fa pandering to fans. But it's awesome. not just pandering to one section of the fans. It's pandering to that section as well as their rivals. Oh. So, so it's just, they're trying to keep everyone happy, but in doing that, they're keeping no one happy. And they're not being coherent with their storylines. Well, that's a bit silly. Like, romantic plots are sort of forced into episodes when you're just like, hold on a second, I just want to see if he beats Deathstroke or whatever. Mm. You know? Maybe um, these characters that have been living in our consciousness for all these years don't actually have that much depth. Maybe not. If I want to see a romantic plot in a movie or a TV show, mm -hmm. I'm going to go for, like, something Nicholas Sparks or a romantic comedy. Not mm -hmm. that I ever do that. But if that's what I wanted to watch, that's what I go for. If I want to... If I'm sitting down and watching a comic book TV show or comic book movie, I want a hero and a villain. I want them fighting. I want the world to be at their knees. Mm. I want to feel scared. I want to feel elated that my hero has won. Yeah. I don't care Well, when was about... the last time you felt like that? I don't know. Well, the thing is, I think Civil War was great because it had uh... all of that shit. It had a romantic subplot, but it didn't feel as forced. I mean, they kissed, what, once? I uh, fucked that film as well. You didn't like it? I liked two parts in that film. Uh, there was what, was it when he was grabbing the helicopter and, like, mm. pulling it down? Oh, that and was, he had his well, arm well, across it, that, and you were just like, ah, oh, fuck, bicep. Was, was that Ant-Man? No, Captain America. Yeah, it didn't give a shit, to be honest. It you liked the Ant-Man. That's the only bit you liked. Ant-Man and Spider-Man, they were good. Oh, yeah, Spider-Man was this is, this, is, this is actually, now coming back to the whole gritty thing, this is where it starts to take itself... Now, now Marvel's been around, it's done well, um, but it starts to take itself way too seriously. And there are big major plot holes. This is the problem with a massive series. When you've literally had a whole uh, city lifted up and dropped, and people have died, come on. Um, but it's only when fucking crossbones it, it explodes. At, uh, 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 maybe the 34th block of a massive house or something. Oh, you yeah, know, no, that felt so forced. That was really forced. And then, you know, all of a sudden we have this brooding nature. And I've read the comic, and I knew they were going to have to have some sort of moment like that. And I thought, really, this is it? It was done all right in the comic, because it wasn't them heroes trying to be heroic. It was heroes getting to a point where they're making a really shit TV show, like a reality show. But Yeah, I'd get it if it was, like, a world leader in that building. Not even that, it's civilians. Like, it's supposed to be... In the comic, it was a school bus of kids and other stuff and, like, a whole block of people. In this, it was a... It's shit... Even if it was a bad tragedy, it's shit that's been done so many times before now. Yeah, they've done it before. Why are they going to start feeling bad now? They're dicks. It's because they have the bloody Scarlet Witch, isn't it? Yeah, but she didn't... I mean, she's no good without, um... Oh, God, I've forgotten his name. Pietro. Quicksilver. 
Who, She's by, very the, good with that, who by the he way, was, the fun was one. handled a lot better in Fox's X Men series. Yeah, I know, but as Quicksilver as a character, he's so much more fun. Not in the Marvel universe. Well, he made. Well, he was barely in it. Yeah, it was shit. I they, mean, they but they the moment he was in it, he was a bit of a laugh. I mean, he didn't get to explore it that much. Oh. But I think that Scarlet Witch would have been more bearable if Quicksilver was around, or Scarlet Witch if they had to kill off one of the twins. Oh. Should have been Scarlet Witch. Yeah, of course. Because Scarlet Witch also is too powerful. Oh, yeah, of course she is, yeah. I mean, where are the stakes in that one? So she could mind-meld me into doing whatever she wants, and she could also, I don't know, fake, make, like, balls of energy and kill me, and so what's the point of me fighting her? I'll let her do... I'd, I'd let... I would I'd let, rather go for the bow and arrow guy. I'd let her do what... I would... I'd fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> is what oh, I'm God. trying to say. So basically, um, this, this episode is supposed to be about DC, and we've just talked about Marvel. Well, DC, <laughs> I to be honest, I only really know a couple of properties of DC. That's going to be Batman. Uh, I think Arrow was all right. You know, it wasn't amazing. It just felt like green Batman. Um, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. But it's Robin Hood, isn't it? It's Robin Hood, yeah. I like. I liked, uh, I tell you what I do... You did used to love was the DC uh, animations like Justice League Unlimited and things like that. Yeah, they were pretty fun yeah. to watch on a Saturday morning. Ar- Ar- Arrow was cool. It wasn't even a Saturday morning. This is like in the oh god, this is making me sound shit, but it was in like the noughties when we were in high school. Yeah, I watched them on the Saturday morning. They were on like the GMT, not GMTV. Um, a Saturday morning on ITV, they were on. I think I had a legal cable, and that's how I watched them. Oh, okay, I didn't. Yeah, um, my my family were fairly legal. He broadcasted out loud. And yeah, immigrants are the problem. What? I'm an immigrant, technically. No, you're not. Yeah, I'm from uh, uh, New Zealand. No, you're not. A little bit. No, you're not. Like one fiftieth. For fuck's sake, we're I th- all one fiftieth New think, Zealand. I think. We're all one fiftieth New Zealand. I mean, my evidence is the fact that I just thought it up. <laughs> I'm more New Zealand than you because I've researched it more. Because you're a fucking Kiwi. <laughs> I don't even like kiwis. They're furry and disgusting. Well, that's why you fucking cut them open. <laughs> uh, yeah, but the insides, they look a bit ooh, sinister. Oh, it, like, they're delicious. Have you cut open and what, looking at a kiwi, a kiwi? I mean, it's just, what? Yeah, it's lovely. I don't like it. All right. <laughs> it's, it's like peaches and um, it's, tomatoes. It's like you're eating into skin. If, if anyone was going to be interested in eating into skin, I would have thought it was you. I'm not mad. Who do you think you're recording with? Uh, Tarbin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even you thought, yeah, you know what? Good point. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I, tomatoes were uh, a bit of an acquired taste. You always think that as a kid, like... It used to be tomatoes were just disgusting. And even now, I'm kind of like, I'll have them. But, I'm, you know, I'm not... I'll tell you what I fucking loathe is cucumber. I cucumber. love cucumbers. See, see, you like it, but I, I can't stand it. it just, it's just it got such a strong taste. It destroys the 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 taste of whatever you're eating, and you just taste and cucumber. It doesn't have a strong taste. It's a cool cucumber. It, but when you bite into something, you, you say like tomato or, or a bit of onion or something, it doesn't take over. Cucumber does. It takes over and all you can taste until you get that shit no, no, down. No, no, tomatoes are the thing that takes over. Well, potato, it's not potato. only just the taste, it's the texture that takes over. And that's another reason I hate cucumbers. Cucumber's texture is fine. It's to you, to tomatoes you. Tomatoes that have the problem. Tomatoes are nice, all right. Tomatoes, tomatoes have the problem, the texture problem. Mm, I could fuck a tomato. Go fuck your tomatoes then. I will. Uh, good, I hope you enjoy yourself. I will. <laughs> okay. It's lovely. It's, it's because it feels like flesh. It feels great. <laughs> oh, God. Mm. Anyway. Um, Arrow. Yeah. The do- <laughs> this episode is called The Dorks Do DC, for crying out loud. I'm doing something. Are, are you planning on watching any of the DC movies? Um, yeah, actually, out? I do. I am kind of interested in Wonder Woman. I would like to see what Wonder Woman looks like. Is it because of... Um, yeah, what she looks like. Not even that. It just feels like the first time they've actually handled the character and it doesn't look like a complete mess. Really? Yeah, well, from what I've seen. F- from what I've seen of what DC has done and how they've rushed into production, they're just trying mm-hmm. to capitalise on titles and the fact that there's a comic book furor, for a, for a, for a, whatever a comic word furor. I was trying to say. <sighs> whatever word I was trying to say. Uh, none of this stuff is going to end up good at this point. I mean, we've got enough evidence to prove that they're not very good. It's the only thing I've actually shown a spark of interest in. And to be honest, it's only because 
it's one of the first female representations of a comic book character that's leading the role, you know? You haven't seen a Black Widow-led uh, film yet. Yeah, I know. But we're getting Captain Marvel, aren't we? To be fair, like, I, uh, people say that, but she ends up being, like, a co-lead in all the Captain America films. It doesn't even feel like a Captain America film most of the time. Well, that's because Captain America's a fucking bland character. Uh, again, I'm not even joking. He's like Superman. He's just, In fact, he's worse than Superman. At least Superman has his dark no, no, side. No, 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 no. What, Henry Cavill Superman or just Superman? Superman in general. Okay, that's cool, because Cap- Henry America, Cavill sucked. I- I've actually read... I remember I told you this anyway. I've read Civil War. The cheesiest line I've ever read in a comic book was from there. And it was Captain America. He, in the comic book, you know, pro-registration. So he's anti-registration. He goes... Uh, zero, he goes gorilla, right? He doesn't want to be captured. Yeah. So they all have their secret identities. And this one line where he's in a he's in with Yellow Jacket and a couple and Hercules and a couple of other superheroes, they're all undercover. And they're like, Cap, what's wrong? And he says this to him. Oh, I was just thinking about a, a make a wish foundation kid I was supposed to see today as Captain America, but I won't be able to do that. And it's, I was like, Oh, are you serious? Like they've gone for the ultimate cheese to make him look like Jesus. It's so cringy. Oh, my God. Okay, I don't want to offend any comic book readers out there, right? No, no, I, I don't books care. comic in general, are cheesy and campy. Yes, and it... That and, is why they're popular. And you, so you actually admit it's fucking cheesy and fucking campy. Yeah, but just I, because I, I think a lot of comic that, books are cheesy and Yeah, like, just because campy. they sometimes they're meant to be doesn't mean that we can't call them out for it. Yeah. You know, you can make a good comic book without resorting to that sort of cheesy shit. Mm. It's, yeah, well, that's what I think anyway. I think Civil War could have done could have been done better. It, it, it's not something you can do when you've only got a handful of heroes, even after all these years. You know, you need a bunch, really, to, to really portray Civil War. N- well, no, not in a film, because uh, you see what it's like, like the X-Men movies and stuff, when they have too many heroes. Well, here's the thing. Everyone gives X-Men The Last Stand a load of shit. But I tell you one thing it did right. I believed that there were that many mutants on that bridge. It, and you didn't have to introduce anyone. It, it pulled off an army of mutants. And you still thought, you know, you don't have to introduce me to them. I, I do think that they're all there. You know, <laughs> I'll sound like a kid. But my point is, it gave off that effect. You didn't think it was just Vinnie Jones and a couple of other actors there. They had all these extras pretend to be, you know downtrodden mutants and it worked for you maybe well any potato potato you know for the rest of the world not so much so you didn't like when you actually watching it you didn't think you obviously it's a shit film it is a shit film well no because the reason that people get so invested in the battle is because they know the characters mm-hmm. like just giving me a shot of like hundreds of people that are supposed to be these mutants that I'm supposed to be siding with. That doesn't work for me. No, no. It's not I have a, no personal I'm not, I'm not talking um, about connection. you having your personal connections. I'm not talking about you actually enjoying it. I'm just saying, uh, seeing all those people, you, you believed, like, they were supposed to be mutants on that bridge. Like, that's an army of mutants. Well, yeah, because you have a shot a lot of people. I mean, you could do the same thing anywhere. Exactly. Like, World, World War Two films. It felt a lot... World War films, in, in, okay? I don't need to meet every fucking soldier. In which you case... You get a shot of them. It felt, it's implied. It fe- not to say that it was better, but it did feel a lot more epic scale. Ah, uh, really? Mm-hmm. I, I could care less. Uh, Civil War was a bunch of people fighting in an airport with superpowers. Yeah, but I cared more about them because I knew who the fuck they oh, were. Oh, yeah, I'm sure... Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't... You shouldn't care more about them. They add more character, but on the scale of things, you know, it, you just believe there was a whole army attacking a bridge, you know, in, number, mm. in the last stand. My point is, Civil War is what that was meant to be like. It was meant to be tons of heroes coming together and fighting the shit out of each other, and it just wasn't. I don't care. I like Civil War more than the fucking last stand. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. But again, Chris, why do you keep bringing it onto Marvel? Because oh, you asked. I didn't ask. Yeah, you did. You said something about Captain America. Well, maybe DC just doesn't have a run of things I'm interested in. I mean... That's what I was going to actually close with, actually. Yeah, it's... With, it's... with, with how, many, how many Marvel episodes have we had? Like, about a lot, three right? now. We've had, like, three. Well, you can and include this one. How many, times did we, how many times did we mention DC in those episodes? I'm sure we... Enchantress. Uh, I think we did yeah, a no, test Yeah, no, that was Matt. a quiz. That doesn't count. Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. Well, DC... I don't think we did... But this episode that we were planning to do about DC, mm. we've basically been talking about Marvel. 
and how it compares. So I don't think there's any way DC's going to stand on its own feet because we're constantly comparing it to Marvel. I think it'll always be there. I mean, DC has its strengths. It's where it's not finding it in TV shows anymore. It's definitely finding it in video games and things like that. Well, no, no. TV shows are successful. And it's just our, my issue of it is because of the shared universe that CW have Mm -hmm. because it doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. Like individually, the shows, apart from Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl, because I haven't watched it, so I don't, I can't comment on that. Mm. The shows themselves are fine. Mm. They're actually pretty good. They're fun to watch. I mean, sure, they could do a Netflix and be shorter and have tighter seasons. So it doesn't seem so stretched out and so much filler in it. Mm. But that's life. That's with any sort of TV show you get. Yeah. Um, so in general, I think DC TV show quite like like Gotham. It's evolved so much from season one. I mean, it's so campy, it's so weird, it's very dark. Mm. So that's pretty good. Um, I guess I guess you can call um, what's it called Preacher DC because that's from Vertigo. I didn't read the Preacher comic book, so I have no idea what they're about. I don't know if it's true to the comics. But I really enjoyed watching Preacher. Yeah, it's good, is it? It, it? Yeah, and no major events really happened or something. It was like an origin. The first season wasn't like an origin of him, but it didn't feel that dragged out. I mean, sure, things happened. Okay, I was about but to say. It was like him in a town as I'm, a preacher. I'm tired of origin stories that just drag out. No, no, but it was him in a town as a preacher mm. and getting the powers and us getting introduced to this mess of characters mm. and it it felt good yeah well that's it good. felt I'm, nice i've been wanting to watch that my friend lent me the comic book anyway so i still haven't read that yeah so i think the dc tv shows are fine it's just i'm not a fan of their shared universe and also it's not like marvel where they're connected to marvel movies and tv shows they're both connected to each other and they reference each other right mm-hmm. dc the film part are completely ignoring the television even though the televisions are the ones that's popular right now and also uh, them them ignoring it like bringing a new barry allen in i mean there was no point of that to be honest that there's other flashes you can use a different incarnation of flash oh i haven't watched one episode of flash oh i love flash Uh, a lot of speedsters though i mean it's getting on me but they aren't acknowledging this other tv universe but they are affecting it like at the moment, we have Will, a Will Smith version of Deadshot. Uh, when that's announced, the Deadshot in Arrow gets killed. Uh, and the Deadshot in Arrow was amazing. I loved him. Yeah? Yeah, so, like, a lot of characters are in the TV shows uh, are suffering because of the films. So that's also another reason I'm hating on the films, because I like the TV shows. Will Smith is a dead shot. Yeah. It was... Uh, I, 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 Suicide Squad is one of the... It's Worst trying. You've no, ever no, no. It's, it's not. It's just. It try. It's. We, we. You know. We talked about that extreme attitude that, like, Winter Soldier and stuff, was trying to do, like, with quips and stuff. Well, the Suicide Squad is like the epitome of. Look how it's trying to be an arty film. Uh, with. Uh, it it changed the soundtrack three times in the first five minutes. Like, uh, and it, it blows it slow. Okay, I always think that soundtracks you have to have like a, it's like a cake you got your cherry on top which is the trailer song and everything else is you know the inner workings that matter are going to be like scores and things like that but it's just cherries it's just like hand picked you know like um clearance and and, uh, and and clear water and um you know these songs that should be in trailers but they have one for every character and it's it blowing its load constantly trying to oh i just <sighs> It's good effects, though. Oh, yeah. Okay, if you say so. I'll take your word for it. I really don't think I'm ever actually going to watch Suicide Squad. No. I mean, I, first of all, I, I'm not exactly that happy it exists. I mean, I wasn't looking forward to it. Mm. And the fact that it affected the well, stuff that I did like. It was never going to be successful. Well, I, I mean, it could I mean, be no, successful. I think, but... I think Warner Brothers were expecting it to be successful. Yeah, but the point is, it was never going to outlive its own hype. Yeah. I think Warner Brothers, they've sh- completely shot themselves in the foot by rushing into everything with mm-hmm. this, like, DC extended mar- movie universe. Yeah. I mean, Marvel did it slowly, and they didn't release all of their plans up front. Mm. Like they they came out with Iron Man, and then they were just like, "Oh, that was successful, so let's plan a couple more." And then and then in a couple of years, we'll get back and we'll talk about maybe doing an Avengers movie. Yeah. They did it slow and sled- steady, and then when they knew that they had a like a um, good business plan and that this was working, and they could ride it out, 
they were just like, okay, so these are the movies that we could release and we can introduce different characters so we can retire these characters and it'll be a new, and it'll be like a new genre with this character here like you've got with Doctor Strange. But with DC, they were just like, okay, no, these are all of the movies that we're going to release over the next 20 years and everyone's obviously going to watch it. Um, And here are all the sequels that will come out and then these are all the Justice League movies and we're going to have all of these characters in all of their movies. Mm. As in, like, we've got Wonder Woman, we've got... They had Aquaman, they had everyone in Batman versus Superman. And they're going to keep doing that, aren't they? It's not just cameos. Mm. They're relying heavily on all of these properties to make them popular. It's not like an end of credit scene of Thor in Doctor Strange or something. It seems like Marvel's on a winning streak, doesn't it? Yeah, well, because they thought it out, whereas, like, Warner Brothers are paying catch-up, and now they've Mm. announced all these titles, they have to sort of follow through. You know how you can redeem DC in one simple sentence? They didn't make Ghost Rider. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Wait, no, is Ghost Ghost Rider DC? It's Marvel. Yeah, but you said one thing that DC can do to redeem itself, it didn't make Ghost Rider. My point is... That was a shit film made by yeah, Marvel. Yeah, but you know, Marvel, the company didn't make Ghost Rider. That was a different company. Oh, well, DC didn't make it. That was it. one of the ones that was sold off when, like, DC were in financial it's, it's trouble. The, my point is, it's a Marvel property, and it was a shit film. No, okay, no. It's not part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm not it talking about count. that shit. I'm talking about a Marvel film. It's not a Marvel It's a film. Marvel comic book. It's a Marvel comic book. No, no, Chris, you don't understand. It's not part of that universe. And no, it's not part of the universe. Yeah, but that's what we're talking about. I'm talking about Marvel in general. You need to stop doing that, because it's not Marvel in general, because Marvel didn't do it. You can't keep hating on Marvel for stuff they didn't do. You've got to keep stop sucking that Marvel dick, because they have made some shit films. Okay, you can criticise Winter Soldier, Captain America, all you want, and I'll let universe. you do it. It's not the Marvel Universe. No, 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 no. no. Okay, you criticise Captain America, i let you do it, because, okay, it's your opinion, but... Ghost Rider, X Men, all that bullshit—they aren't Marvel films. I know they're not. I know they're not the Marvel universe. They're they're characters that were like sold off when Marvel were crippled and almost bankrupt, and they were exploited and shut so upon. So you're saying X Men is no longer a Marvel property? Not in the film universe. No, not in TV. Okay, so that's where I'm going to draw the line differently. It's okay. Look it up. It's not part of that universe. The Marvel universe. It's not part of the Marvel Universe as we're talking about. We were talking about the movies and the TV shows. It's not part of the Marvel Universe. Jesus Christ. So um, if I picked up an X-Men book, it wouldn't have Marvel on it. There's a difference between that. It's publishing rights. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. We've been talking about the movies and TV shows this whole time. I still count them as Marvel characters. Okay, so you can talk about the Marvel fucking books. You can talk about X-Men as a Marvel comic book. You can't talk about the film as a Marvel film because it's not part of that universe. And my point that went over your head was that DC didn't make a film that shit. Neither did Marvel, apparently. Yeah, all right. No, Marvel didn't make it. Yeah, Marvel wrote the comic books. They didn't make the film. Yeah, sure, a Marvel character, but Marvel didn't. They make didn't make the film. the film. I'm sure they didn't. No, of course they did not make the I, film. Yeah, I'm sure they didn't. So you have no point there. No, my point is, di- oh fuck it, I don't give a shit. DC <laughs> didn't make the film. What are you talking about now? It's, it was just a stupid little. DC joke didn't make meant. the film. DC Ghost didn't Rider. make the film. It was supposed to be a joke. DC didn't make the film. All right, uh, it was a shit film with a Marvel character in it. Doesn't matter if Marvel made the film. It doesn't matter. My point was. DC didn't make it. At least they didn't make that film. But fuck oh, it. okay, that's fine. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. No, Went we have to leave that in because that's the most heated debate we've ever well, had on this show. Yeah, fuck it. I, uh, it went <laughs> over your head. You could have explained it earlier rather than me going into a rant for 10 minutes. But, okay, no, we'll leave it. This is actually part the most heated debate we've ever would, had. Part of me knew you would. We've talked about murderers. We've talked about rapists. Mm. We've talked about paedophiles. This is what breaks us. <laughs> yeah, this is what breaks us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Of all the stuff that we could have actually argued about. Oh, shit, we're geeks. Uh, you are. I'm, I'm still <laughs> cool, so... You know, um, at work, I, they, they were they were asking me about... How, well, they were talking about how geeky I was yesterday. Uh-huh. And they continued doing it today, and I was like, what is going on? Why are you, like, attacking me after all these years? Wait, you attacked them? No, they were calling me geeky, and oh, they were discussing right. the geeky stuff that I do and stuff that I watch. Yeah. Yeah, it turns out they were just snooping for my secret Santa. But, um, oh, that's yeah. clever, yeah. 
How did yeah. you find? Did they actually tell you, or did you think that? Oh uh, well, no, because I was just like, okay, they keep talking about my geekiness. Like, what's going on? Mm. And they would, and then I mentioned something about plushies and stuff that I had, mm. and then she, they were just like, what are plushies? What are this? What's a Funko Pop action figure? And and then I'm just like, okay, I'm showing them these things, and I'm just like, why do you want to know all this stuff? I mean, it's not relevant to you. Mm. And we aren't that close. I mean, yeah, we work together. Yeah, we have a laugh. But, yeah, you don't need to know all this stuff about me. Yeah. And then and then it just clicked. And I'm just like, are you doing this for my secret Santa? And she's that's, like, yeah. That's nice of them, though, I must have. Yeah. Yeah. At least my secret Santa is doing that. My, at least my secret Santa is doing their research. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Anyway, that was, uh, that was heated. It was heated. That's, uh, that's, you know, I don't have to worry about putting the heat on now. That was, uh, yeah, <laughs> you rubbed me red raw. Oh, God. Um, but, yeah, you, you know, anything... but, but, but you know, I, I still think of you as a friend. You know that. I think we might need a divorce. I'm fine with that as well. Okay, at least a legal separation. Yeah. Yeah. I've had enough. It's, yeah. it's, it's, you've got to stop hitting Matt. All right. <laughs> You know, he's out the world, You have to stop saying X Men is part of the Marvel U- reason, cinematic universe. Reason not bringing you. You know, he doesn't want it anymore. Time him. Don't care. Wow. <sighs> but anyway, yeah, Suicide Squad was a bit shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, goodness me. Godness. Um, godness me. Uh, we've had very little to actually say about DC. Mm, that's mm. true. I, I think, to be honest, uh, in terms of, I think characters. Okay, if there's one thing I will say about DC, characters can be written, uh, aside from the Marvel Universe, characters can be written very realistically and portrayed as more human. Whereas, uh, for instance, villains in DC tend to be tragic rather than Marvel ones just being upright thugs. What I will say is I I, I know more about Marvel heroes, uh, their catalogue and things. Um, I don't, don't think that's necessarily true. Like... DC, they have upright thugs a lot. A lot of them, like oh, Batman, they do, yeah. all of his enemies are upright thugs. No way, no. His Batman's enemies are the tragic ones. Like Penguin, like he's not a straight up thug. He, he's, you know, you get to know why he's like what he is. He's, you know, he's he's a, he's brought up like he was ugly and a monster. And then you've got Joker, which when you find out about his backstory, that's crazy. Um, mm. And then all of them. Oh, like, you're talking about like pre this universe that we have now. Like when the movies were actually good. Are you talking about the film? You're not talking just the about films? like the Man of Steel era, like till now. I'm just talking in general about the, the characters. Oh, okay, then that's fine. I mean the the villains. Even if you want to stretch it, you could say Zod is a bit tragic because he's the last of his kind, almost, and especially near the end because Clark pretty much upright destroys the rest of the the guys he was hanging out with joshing around space with so he but it, it's just i love michael shannon it just wasn't portrayed as well as it could have been yeah i just think Clark kent sucks in that movie so he probably should have been the one to die it would have been more interesting yeah, it would have been interesting it would have been over i as can't well. wait till a proper hero actually gets to die in the movie in what film any of them okay? yeah they, they're on. not gonna die they make too much money Mm. Well, no, actually, Marvel could be able to be brave enough to do it. I mean, it'll be a fake out because they're starting the new roster of characters soon. So I think. Oh, I, I think Rob, once... Downey Jr. will be the first one to go. Yeah, I mean, he's asking for a lot of money, isn't he? Yeah, and and he don't need it, and he he's probably going to opt for a way out. He's done his legend. He looks great. He, he's he's out. He's going to go. Oh, oh uh, fucking... he's going to be gone after like what what, what how many Avengers movies he signed on to? He's going to be gone by twenty nineteen, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. quite an estimate. I, I just hope if he does go, like your estimate says, we don't get more of Pepper Potts because I don't really care. I know, Pepper Potts, we're not going to get any more of her because we haven't got, had her since Iron Man 3, right? That was 2013. Imagine Gwyneth Paltrow going, all right, Pepper Potts has to be pregnant with his son, the next Iron Man, oh, you know, or something like that. The thing is, as of all the... I, I like the fact that Marvel is stepping away from love interests. I mean, it sort of has, hasn't it? Not really. Yeah, it has. The last film. What was the last film? Civil Doctor War? Doctor Strange. Oh, yeah, but those are one-offs, isn't they? I mean... Yeah, because they're adult characters. Um, but no, no, but even the new Thor, Jane isn't in it. Did you say adult characters? As in they're grown-ups. Yeah, they're all grown-ups, of course. But I mean, but they know about responsibility. They know about life and death. I mean, they're doctors. Mm-hmm. Whereas the others, they're just like, eh. What, entrepreneurs and military soldiers? 
So you're saying the 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 actual vocations of these okay, new yeah, characters? Okay, yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, actually, no. Before before Captain America was a Superman, Superman superhero, he was just a weedly kid that wanted to be, play with his friends. What what did he do? What was his job before Nothing. Super Soldier? Yeah, he was just he just exactly hung around. he was bumming about. So yeah, um, <laughs> what other characters are there? Thor. He was come on. He was an arrogant like playboy. Is mm-hmm. S character? He was Tony a god. Stark was a playboy. Um, what other ones are there? Black Panther was a Black Panther. Uh, we haven't. President. We don't know much about him. Well, I know all I need to know about him, and he was shit. Okay, and um, yeah, so yeah, that's what I mean by adult. They were grown ups from the beginning. I'm just saying, like, I'm not going to give uh, too much of an in depth discussion on these characters because there's not much to discuss about. Like, I I either think they're a little bit more 3D or they're just shit. They 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 are just there to look cool. That's all they are. Mm. They're not going to be, you know, uh, deeper than um, certain other films that come out. They're just... Oh, yeah. yeah they're this, fun. Yeah, they're fun. Which is why DC fails, I think, because it's not fun anymore. Um, I will admit, I agree with you that at DC, I do prefer their villains a bit more than Marvel. Because Marvel, other than, like, Loki, what villain do you remember after one movie? I remember Mickey Rourke, but that's because he was so That's because it was terrible. Yeah. Um, but I did <laughs> like... If anything, some of these films... You need to have a good villain. And I uh, like Iron Man 2, that was fine. But the thing that made Iron Man 2 cool was that it focused more on Tony himself. And usually I don't care for character analysis in a superhero film. But that was that was a fine exception. I didn't mind that because they, they focused on him and realistic questions uh, like, oh, um, you know, the government trying to take his shit and whatever. And, but the, the fight scenes, you know, I, I just, when I watch a superhero film, just, just give me them fighting shit, man. I, just, I don't need them to be the next Seventh Sea, or you don't need to explore all these these emotions all the time. Just the fight scenes. I think you can count it on your hands. There was like maybe five minutes of actual fight scene. Maybe not even that, because he he is a weapon. He's too no, powerful. Okay, with with Iron Man uh-huh. the movies, I understand why they did that. They're paying Robert Downey more money. So they want him in the movie as much as possible. That's the reason uh, for it. I mean, yeah. people have done critical writing about it, for crying out loud. Uh, so that's the reason that they have him so much, rather than Iron Man. That's you? the reason that Toby Maguire, like, in the Superman, it's Spider-Man sequels, like, how often did he wear his fucking mask? Not often. Uh, I suppose so, yeah. But there were, there were actual action scenes, and they were great. I can't really remember Iron Man 2 that much, I'm not going to lie. Other than, the, other than like, Mickey Rourke and stuff. I, I, I tell you what, though, like, the build-up on trailers and things, Iron Man 2 was one of the best because the scenes that they did have fights in, you know, the racetrack, and uh, when all those robots come down, you just see War Machine going crazy with his miniguns, they looked so badass. And that's the reason I'm pissed off that they didn't have longer fight scenes because they were amazing. Yeah, because trailers, they put their best bits in the trailer. That's true, but even in the films, they they were shockingly good. The problem with Iron Man is he's not a fight... He's not like a punchy superhero. He can, but because he's got lasers and shit, he can end a fight so quickly. So it's it's just... He's he's an overmatched superhero. A Spider-Man, Batman, they're still punching and kicking and swinging and doing all this crazy stuff. It's awesome, but... You know, Iron Man is just a machine. He's a robot. He, um... Not gonna be wrong, he looks great, but... Yeah, and at the end of, like, Iron Man 3, you realise, oh, he doesn't actually need to be in the bloody suit. I mean, what's the point? Oh, yeah, I still haven't watched the end of Iron Man 3. It's, um, I, <laughs> don't I started bother, watching, don't started bother, watching like, it. Ben Kingsley, no, right? it made me want to cry. <laughs> ben Kingsley, wow. They really fucked oh, the Oh, for God's sake. Up. Oh, that was awful. Awful, uh, awful, awful. I, he's supposed to be the Joker to Iron Man, but yeah. I'm, I'm into comic books every now and then. I'm not a diehard, oh, shit, I can't believe they didn't do this, you know. But even I thought, wow, the Mandarin isn't... Is he supposed to be the ultimate enemy for Iron Man? And you did this. And um, it's just a surprising... Because it just feels like there's your main enemy and then there's the hidden enemy. If we're going by Marvel, right, who's actually the hero's mentor. And DC. Like, uh, you have the dragon and then you have the true dragon. So it's like the true end boss. So when in Iron Man the true end boss is just the same as the true end boss in the second film. And it's like, what, just another business guy? Okay. And, yeah, I just... Phew, that's a bit of a shame. But at the same time, it still had its fun moments, and they all do, really. I mean, even even DC, it has its fun moments. You know, they're, they're meant... Even if in the cinema it's all cringy, at least, you know, you might look at your friends and go, oh, wow, that was bad. But 
it, it's it's all got some sort. You can take stuff away from this stuff, you know. Mm. Yeah, I I still don't think I'm tempted to watch DC movies. That's good. There's a silver lining to this because it means that you've got opportunity to be surprised. Yeah. Who maybe. knows? Though, I Wonder Woman could be the next uh, Citizen Kane, so you never know. Uh, it won't. It won't. But you never know. But it won't. I just think they've been so sloppy with it, and it's been silly far so far. I mean, this is the trend that they've set, and they're going to go along with well, it. Well, yeah, they, they were kind of just waving their dicks around for a while, yeah. weren't they? And the thing is, they're trying to make... Okay, I understand them being in the same universe, but they trying to make them too similar to one mm. another, like genre-wise. Where at least, like, with Marvel, you've got different ones. You mean comic book genre? <laughs> no, like, yeah, I know, it's I know. the gritty real, yeah. whereas, like, well, Marvel, thing, like... You can, Marvel, you've got, like, Guardians of the Galaxy set in space, and mm. the same with Thor, which is sort of... Thor, it's like, it's like mythology plus, like, fantasy sci-fi-ish mm. Even Wonder Woman stuff. is, like, the... I know she's supposed to be Amazonian, she's got an accent, but even it's she be feels set like in London, isn't it? It's kind of World War Two ish as well. So that's kind of like Captain America. I mean, people say, Oh no, but she's Amazonian. Come on, she's wearing the American colours and let's face it, she's like the American hero, the American heroine, if anything. Yeah. But I'll still I'll still watch it, see what it's like, you know. I like Wonder Woman, so she's cool. Yeah, I don't trust you because she's a very attractive lady, so I'm not gonna ask you for a review because I think it might be biased. What, because is she sexy? Yeah. Because uh, I can tell that she's sexy. It doesn't mean that she's actually good, good, any uh, good in it. I don't know. I've rated a couple of pornos, and not, not out of ten. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we can. We should talk any more about this, because we've barely talked about DC in the DC episode. Mm-hmm. Well, what is there to say, you know? We had our first real argument today. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And it was about this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I was going to say something, but I've forgotten now. Next time, we might uh, mention a Marvel film, maybe. Will we? I don't know, sure. <laughs> no, um, yeah, yeah. So, um, next time, me and Chris, we're probably going to have to be recording from separate studios because um, this little tiff is not over. Yeah. S- stay tuned for my audio uh, review of X-Men 3, The Last Stand, you guys. Well, hey! hey. Can't, you're such a dick. Hey, greatest film dick. ever. I'll give you a such sneak a peek. Nine such out of dick. ten. Hey. Such a dick. You always do this! What? Nothing, I'm just trying to feign an argument. You fucked it up, Matt. You're trying to have like... Matt, some... did I call you Matt again? Oh you just God. fucked it up, Chris. We're just... trying to feign an argument that we could fade out from. Fucking you fucking wanker. Ate your own words, didn't you? You bastard. You fucked it up, Matt. You fucked it up, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking dick. Yeah. Well. Yeah, okay. I, I think I want to say goodbye because I'm actually quite tired. My throat hurts from shouting at you. Oh, okay. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. You fucking dick, Chris.